Hey YouTube, this is Project Prepper 42. And before I get going on today's video, I just want to take the time to say thank you for all the support that you guys have given me. You know, I started this channel about uh, two months ago, and I'm up to like 40 some subscribers now, and that's awesome. I never thought I never thought that I would you know get that many subscribers just starting out, but um, you know, I, I I wanted to put this video to this channel together uh, to help people get prepared. You know, I didn't do it for the famous you know YouTube money. I didn't do it for you know to say that I have hundreds of thousands of subscribers, even though that would be nice. But I, did, I didn't do it for that reason. Uh, you know, I did it to help people become prepared. Um, you know, with the things that are going around, you know, our weather, you know, just everything that's going on in this world, you know, it's it's really important to uh, be prepared. And uh, you know, not too long ago, actually, right before I started this channel. Um, we, our neighboring state had a really bad flood and, you know, there was tons of people who lost their family members, lost, you know, loved ones, lost a absolutely everything. And, you know, I want to be able to, the main goal of this channel is to help you guys start a emergency, you know, disaster plan and start, you know, putting up some things just in case if something would happen. So. Like I said, I do want to say thank you so much for all the support and the comments, and I really do appreciate it. So let's dive right into this. Um, I was looking around at the um, some of the things that you might need as a, a beginning prepper. And like I said, I'm not an expert in all this. I'm not, you know, I've just been doing a lot of reading, a lot of studying, and you know, I pulled up FEMA's emergency list, which, by the way, if FEMA has an emergency list, you better have one, too. Just saying. Um, you know, and I was going through all this to try to, you know, figure out what the best, um, you know, some of the things that you might need to have on hand during a disaster. Um, the, one of the first things that you're going to need is a good uh, medical bag, a medical kit. You know, if something really bad happens, there may not be a way to get to the hospital. You know, and a little small first aid kit that you pick up at the dollar store is not going to, you know, it's not going to work, you know, because, you know, there's still going to be infections, there's still going to be stitches, broken bones, and, you know, even surgical things that might have to you know, happen. Whereas, you know, the doctor's not going to be around, so you're going to need to be able to, you know, help. You're going to need to be able to provide your family with this kind of uh, health care. So, um, putting a good medical kit together is very, very important, but I guess, you know, if, if all else fails and you have nothing else, a small little kit would be fine if that's all you have, but, you know, you really don't want to uh, let that go on the back burner because you want to make sure you have most of your things covered, you know, your airways, your breathing, and, you know, your your heart, you know, you want to make sure that you cover your ABCs and know how to stop bleeding know how to you know give stitches and all that type of stuff so you want to make sure that your first aid bag is well stocked and you have enough gear in it to um, to treat whatever's going on uh, the next thing that's pretty important is water um, you're going to need water for obviously drinking you're going to need water for cleaning uh, cooking you know all types of things so water is very 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 important and a disaster situation. You know, you can live um, several weeks without food. You can only live a few days without water. So make sure that you have a good stockpile of water, um, and also ways to purify water. You know, if uh, if you have a river close by or you know some way of collecting water, um, you can always boil the water. You know, use the purification tablets. And another good thing is bleach. If you can get a gallon-sized uh, thing of bleach and put a couple of drops in a gallon of water and let it sit, and, and you know that that's a great way to purify water. Uh, the second thing, or the next thing, is food. You know, you're going to want to have a variety of different foods. Um, you know, I, I just pulled a few things out of my stash: noodles and uh, fruit, and uh, my favorite is spam in a can. Uh, you know, you're going to want to have a variety because nobody's just going to want to live off of spam for, you know, during a disaster. So you're going to want to have your fruits and uh, your vegetables and your meat and, you know, rice and beans and that and that kind of stuff. And you also wouldn't hurt to put in, you know, some comfort food. Like, uh, you know, I've got 
uh, some pop tarts put away and, and some cereal, sugary cereal and that type stuff. So having stuff like that, you know, really helps you out and, you know, is, is there's all different types. And I'm a big fan of the canned, uh, canned food just because um, in my area it's easier to get than um, like the, the mountain house stuff and all the freeze dried stuff. Plus that stuff's more expensive. Whereas, you know, you can get a can of Spam and, you know, be good to go. Um, the next thing is a way to cook your food. Uh, you know, you cook it over uh, a fire. Um, I use this uh, fancy heat a lot. I've talked a lot about this. Um, your, a folding stove. Um, you know, you can even use your grill in your backyard to, to cook your food. But you want to make sure that you have a way to, to be able to cook. Um, you also want to have a sanitation kit. Um, you know, um, I, for example, I pulled out this kind of hand soap, um, some um, hand sanitizer, trash bags, and uh, there's a ton of uses for trash bags. You're going to need something to poop in, so here's the trash bags. And you know, you got your uh, your bleach for cleaning and your vinegar for cleaning. And by the way, don't don't uh, leave this out because uh, when we had that uh, real bad storm a couple of years ago, which was the starting point of being a prepper for me, um, you know, we didn't have, you know, the food was okay because everything in the freezer had to be eaten because it was all thawing out. So food really wasn't a problem. Uh, water wasn't that bad because we always kind of kept bottled water around anyways. But one of the biggest problem was was sanitation. You know, we had no way of taking showers. We didn't have so you know we were going down to the river all the time to get a shower. But you know, we was running out of soap. And for a, a big family and you know people, you know that was one thing that we kind of struggled with a lot was was sanitation because you know we never thought in a million years that a big ratio would. I mean, I've never seen it before. So that's just you know proof to say that. You never know when something would happen. So, having a, a good sanitation kit together is very important. So, um, also flashlights. Um, you're going to want to be able to have light. Um, and I just, like I said, I just brought a few things. I'll just kind of show you. I picked this flashlight up at the uh, at a yard sale a while back for two dollars, and it came with three batteries. So, like I said, people are dumb. I don't understand why they got rid of this. But the problem with this is you can't find these huge batteries. Uh, I can't anyways. You know, there's, you want to make sure that if you do choose flashlights, you have enough batteries to go by. You know, I brought um, different flashlights out to kind of show you. This one opens up and it's got a uh, magnet there at the bottom so you can kind of hang it up and work on whatever. Um, this one here is uh, a Life Gear flashlight. You know, it's a pretty cool little light. I really like the, the blinking blue light so you can use it to signal or, you know, whatever. So any kind of flashlight, any kind of lighting would be good. Another good thing to have is uh, lanterns. Uh, make sure that if you obviously do go with the lanterns, make sure you have enough kerosene. Make sure uh, you have um, extra stock of wicks uh, to go in there just in case because, you know, um, if this is your main method, you don't want to run out of wicks or, or fuel. So make sure that um, you have a little bit of a little bit of everything, a variety of things. Um, the next thing that is pretty important to have is a radio. Um, if you are, if you find yourself in a in a natural disaster, and the power's out, you need to find you need to figure out what's going on. You know, if it's storm related, you know you. you want to know if the storm's over, if it's just starting, if you're in the middle of it, and without a radio you have no way of, of communication. This is an Eaton radio. I keep this in my um, bug out bag. I did a, uh, showed you the contents of my bag and I just pulled this out just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. But um, I, I really like this. It's got a flashlight on it. The outside of the flashlight it glows in the dark so once you turn this on for a while um, this little ring will glow. Um, it has a radio on it, antenna, and the good thing is, is it is a hand crank radio. It does not take batteries. So, um, like I said, I picked this up at Walmart a while back for about 20 bucks or so. So, 
having something like this is, is really important in a disaster situation. Um, the next thing that's pretty important are your tools. You know, uh, you're going to need some tools to repair things with. If, uh, you know, when we had that derecho I was talking about, we had um, a tree come through the house. Luckily, we weren't in it. We were at uh, my um, wife's parents' house. But, um, you know, you're going to need to have your own tools to repair things and to fix things and all that type of stuff. So make sure you have a good set of tools on hand. Uh, FEMA, I was reading on FEMA's website, you know, they were talking about uh, making sure that you have uh, your medication and your prescriptions and, and that type of stuff, which is very important. And I, I keep that in my uh, first aid kit, my medical bag rather. But, uh, and I know you shouldn't do this, but I do it. Uh, whenever, you know, if I have a tooth infection or ear infection or, you know, somebody has some kind of infection in the house other than the liquid stuff, I always keep back a few of the, uh, the pills and just kind of stick them in there just in case because, you know, you may not be able to get your hands on antibiotics. So, um, you know, putting away a few of them here or there, that's, that's a really good, uh, good idea. Another thing that you probably should keep on is, is um, kind of like some uh, emergency cash. Um, you may not be able to access your bank card, you know, your ATM. You might not even be able to get to an ATM, even if it does work. Um, so you want to make sure that you have um, some emergency cash that you can get to quickly. And, you know, because, like I said, you may not be able to get to town or even access your bank account if the power goes down or whatever situation is is happening. Um, another thing that FEMA had on their list was um, reference material. And I am a huge fan, a big believer of emergency reference materials. I have a first aid uh, book in my uh, first aid kit. Each of my bags has a some kind of reference guide in it, just in case if something was to happen to me, you know, somebody else would be able to use the stuff that's in it. Um, you're going to want, you know, this is my sleeping bag. If you're, it's, if it's in the winter time, snow and power goes out, you're going to want a sleeping bag for you and everybody in your family. You're going to want a nice uh, warm change of clothes and, you know, you want to have that kind of stuff on hand. Um, another thing that a lot of people might overlook is fire extinguishers. Um, now, you might not, if the zombies are running around eating people, there's not going to be a fire department. So you're going to want a way to, you know, if a fire starts, you know, you're going to need to have a way to put that, put that fire out. And since we're talking about the fire department and your first aid, rescue squad stuff, we're going to talk a little bit about security. Um, and this is my opinion. This is just what I feel comfortable with and what I've been practicing with and using so you know this might not fit you you might have a different opinion about it so this is probably one of the only you know sections in this list where you can say well you know you don't need that gun you need this one or whatever but you know everybody's a little bit different so anyways um my main gun is my everyday carry gun which is my uh glock 23 um this is probably my go-to weapon because you know it's good at close quarters. You know, I, I like the Glock because it's, it's such a simple gun. You know, if you take it apart and clean it, it doesn't have a whole lot of moving parts to it. Um, you know, the simpler the better, in my opinion. So um, to break this gun down and clean it, it's a it's a breeze. You know, you don't have to worry about putting things, you know, the little parts in there and all the extra moving parts. You know, that's why I chose Glock, and plus it's really comfortable. So. Um, uh, I'll, this is, like I said, my go-to gun. And if I was to, um, you know, I use, I would use it for self-defense or, you know, hunting or whatever, shooting zombies in the face, whatever the situation is. Uh, you also are going to want a small caliber gun for like smaller animals, obviously. And you know, 22 will be just fine for that. Um, this is my go-to. Uh, coon hunting gun. I like to go coon hunting, so this is the gun that I carry with me. Squirrels, small animal, you know, this is the perfect type of gun for that uh, small game type. Now, you can go and, and kill a bigger animal with this, but the problem I have with that is, you know, 
a small caliber gun may only harm or hurt the animal. It may not just kill it all of a sudden. And you know, you don't want the animal to suffer. So you know, you're you're going to want a a uh, bigger gun. And this is my 30 out six Remington. So I have a, my go-to gun. Then I have a smaller caliber, and then I have the bigger caliber for bigger game. Um, and I have you know a shotgun, 12 gauge shotguns are really good to have in a you know in a situation like that because that's a all around uh, a great gun to to have. So like I said. You know, just because I chose, you know, these different types of gun doesn't mean it's the right way, but, you know, that's just what I feel comfortable with. Um, also, having, um, like, a mess kit to, to be able to cook on, to cook with, you know, you want to make sure that you have uh, ways to cook things. Um, you're going to want to have a uh, pencil and paper and ways to leave notes because in a grid down situation, zombies are running around. You know, whatever the situation is, there's not going to be a uh, good way of communication. So you're going to want to be able to have a way to communicate with others, to let people know where you're at. Uh, you know, if you have to leave, you know, you want a way to write that stuff down saying, you know, I left and I, this is where I'm going, you know, come find me here, whatever the situation is. And, um, you know, one of the last things that's uh, overlooked a lot is uh, kind of just for, you know, your kids and you know to be able to get your mind off the things that are going on you know you don't want to all the time be in survivor mode to shoot zombies all the time you know you're going to want to you know live you know with your family you want to be able to still have a family together and, and make memories of shooting zombies and you want to go to you are going to want to have books uh, board games and you know I, I like to stock up on playing cards you know that type of stuff kind of helps you to get you know get out of the situation for a little bit and just kind of relax even though there's probably not going to be a whole lot of re relaxation going on you know but still your kids are, are going to you know want to be able to do something and by stocking up on a few games here or there you know you can find them all the time at the goodwill board games and that type of stuff so, you know, make sure that you have something like that uh, for your kids and just to kind of break the day down. So anyways, like I said, this is just a basic uh, starting list. Um, you know, there's obviously things that I don't have in here that I, that I need. You know, like a, one of my subscribers left a comment of, on a radiation uh, counter. And, you know, I don't have one of those and I need to get one. But, you know, there's, there's going to be things that, um, that I don't have here. But, like I said, this is something, this channel is designed to get you started. Um, if you have been a prepper, then you obviously probably, you probably got more stuff than I do. Uh, but if you, if you haven't been a prepper, if you've never been um, a prepper before, you know, you're, this is a good list to start, you know especially the basics, water, food, and, you know, shelter, and, and that type of stuff. So, you know, just keep that in mind, and, you know, if you don't, if you, you know, like, don't like spam or like some of the things that, you know, you particularly don't want to get, that doesn't mean you have to go out and get it, but I was just, you know, showing you some ideas of some supplies. Anyways, I do want to thank you for watching. Uh, if you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. Tell me what you thought. Leave a, leave a comment, and if you haven't already, Help me uh, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Uh, help it grow. And, and uh, as always, keep on prepping. We'll see you on the next one. Have a good one.